Hey everybody, how are you? I just wanted to say hello this morning. I have a few minutes um, to hop on and give you a quick live video on building your caseload. We have a ton of new members. We got a huge amount of new people joining our page over the weekend. And a lot of you mentioned on the admin questions when you were um, signing on to the page that you were really interested in learning more tips specifically about building your caseload. So here it is. I'm gonna pack in a lot of information really fast and you can always go back and watch this video again later it's always going to be on the page but I wanted to touch base this morning and give you all my best tips so give me a little thumbs up or a heart if you guys can see and hear okay I know last time we had a couple people saying they couldn't um, see the video or they couldn't hear it um, right away so I just want to make sure that we're all on and you guys can hear me and see me I see a couple people have joined us and I'm super excited to dive in. So um, I see a couple thumbs up. Okay, good. So let's jump into our topic today, which is building your caseload. You can do this and I'm gonna help you. Number one, the best way to build your caseload is to give great service. If you are an exceptional therapist, your um, practice will grow like wildfire because everybody's gonna wanna come and see you and everyone that comes to see you is gonna tell 10 of their friends in their own network. So we're gonna do another Facebook Live in the future, more specifically about providing amazing therapy services and what does that look like um, and what makes clients feel like they're being taken care of in a really healthy way um, by a therapist like yourself. So that's the number one way to build your caseload is word of mouth. But as we talked about in last week's marketing um, Facebook Live, I gave you a ton of tips on there on how to nurture your referral sources and how to market your practice. So be sure to go back and watch that if you haven't already done so. You can always click on the video section of our page and make sure that you um, take a peek at that if you need to go back and review that because there's a lot of good tips on that marketing uh, Facebook Live. Um, Right, yeah, going to write notes for everyone. Oh, that is a great idea. Um, oh, good, you can hear and see me. Okay, everybody is on. I'm seeing the comments and um, I'm gonna hop right in. So building your clients, of course, the marketing tips were really important that we reviewed last week. But one thing um, I think that we could be doing even more is considering how you establish yourself as an expert. A lot of people think, oh, how am I going to do this? You know, I'm going to have to um, do a lot of networking or I don't know any associations that I could join to do that with. But when you stop and think about it, you probably already have within your own personal network, like five to 10 people who could be considered really important referral sources for you. So think about posting your information, that you're building your practice, that you're accepting new clients, that you have room in your caseload, that this is your expertise, um, this is what you specialize in. Put that everywhere. Put it on your own personal Facebook page. Put it on your uh, business pages. I saw a lot of you sharing your websites. Um, make sure that your website is live and active. Remember we talked about touching your website a lot or your Psychology Today profile to make sure that bumps to the top of the Google search engine. You want to look as active as possible and the way to do that is by blogging, sharing articles. Um, a couple years ago I went to the Harvard um, Writing and Publishing Conference for Healthcare Professionals. It was phenomenal. It was like three days of jam-packed information and I'm going to share with you a few of the tips that they shared with me um, on this page because they talked a lot about establishing yourself as an authority, establishing yourself as an expert. When you Google my name on Google, I think I'm up to like five or six pages deep on, um, on Google search results for just my name. And I'm not bragging, I'm just sharing information on how I did that. Because what you wanna do is continue to try to share your information widely so that you become an expert or an authority in one niche market. You cannot specialize in seeing all people. You cannot specialize in working with every client, but what you can do is really hone in on your niche. And when you do that, you really find that the more specific you are, the more successful you can be. Um, so I know a lot of people have been talking about um, naming their ideal client, finding out where they can find those clients, um, narrowing down their network. Those are all really important things to ask yourself in the very beginning as you're building a practice. So um, 
the Harvard uh, Publishing and um, um, Writing Conference that I went to was so amazing because they talked about making sure that you establish yourself as an authority. So my niche when I left that conference was really going to all be about mindfulness and self-care for women's health. So my Twitter um, is all about being a mindful therapist. My um, website blogging all had to do with those topics. And what I did was create a Google alert. And if you create a Google alert every single day, Google will email you a list of all the things that you're searching for in your Google alert. So you get into your Google alert, you establish um, some sort of a search, and every day that they find something new on that topic, they will send it to you in your email inbox. So for example, I came home and made a search on women and depression, or women and anxiety, or you know, wellness, or mindfulness, or whatever the topics were, self-care for you know, practitioners, or self-care for busy working moms, or whatever the Google searches are. And every single day, Google will flood my inbox with all the most recent um, articles, topics, hits. It's basically just a very specific Google search that lands right in your email inbox. And what I do with that is every once in a while, I should be doing it more frequently, but it is really good idea to pull those articles that you think are really relevant and post them to your Twitter or your Facebook or your LinkedIn or your Instagram um, or share them anywhere you can. If you have a private practice already established and you don't have a Facebook page or any kind of social media channel for that, it would be important to do that because that's another way that people can share your information and you can network with other referral sources. So when you start publishing those articles, um, even just with one little quote, like this looks fascinating, it's all about mindfulness, and the workplace or it's all about women and depression what do you think or you're engaging with your community and it's drawing more traffic to your page and again you're then becoming top of mind for people who are either a looking for a therapist or know someone who is or if they're a referral source themselves they will be sending you clients so um, it's important that you think about establishing yourself as an authority and when you do that you're really honing in on your niche does that make sense um, Give me a little thumbs up or a like if you've ever heard of doing that. If you already do Google Alerts, I would love to know that. Um, I find them to be very effective in just narrowing the search every single day on a very specific topic that I'm looking to be an authority on. And when I read these articles, I also sound like I'm super knowledgeable on those topics because I'm able to share that information with not only my clients, but my referral network at, um, at large. We've got a lot of little likes. Thanks for all the love and hearts. Um, I appreciate it. So the other thing that helped me a lot in the beginning was networking with um, local area organizations. Don't underestimate the power of your local newspaper. I know it sounds kind of silly, but every hometown has a little newspaper and they're always looking for content. If you write the editor and you say, hey, I have an idea for an article, um, that I could write on a current topic or, um, you know, it's always really good to like combine this with something that's already going on. So for example, right now people are stressed out because of the holidays. If you're doing grief and loss work, you could be writing an article on how to cope with grief and loss for the holidays. Um, it's also a really stressful time for people financially or um, in terms of anxiety or depression or addiction. So you could be pairing up a, like a timely event with a topic that's hot in your niche area. And when you pitch an article to um, a local newspaper, usually they will gobble you up. Even if you're just a student, don't underestimate your contributions. You know more than the average layperson on a lot of these topics. And as you start to throw your information out there, you're then becoming a, a recognizable figure in your local community. When I first started my practice, I actually pitched this idea to a local newspaper. I wanted to do a regular column um, that was kind of like a Dear Abby. 
And they said that would be great. Um, they definitely wanted that. And um, it was free and easy content for them to fill in their newspaper every week by a local expert. And I basically made up a question that I thought a client would have, and I answered it. So it was a tiny little Q&A, little, um, little section. And what I got out of that was a ton of circulation, a ton of free advertising. If I had to pay for an ad in that newspaper, it would have cost me several hundred dollars. But because I contributed an article every other week um, to their newspaper on a topic that was of interest to my local community. I also got my picture and my bio and my website um, posted into the article in the paper every other week. And I did it for years until I couldn't think of any more topics to share. And I was also, my practice was growing. So I got to the point where I, en I enlisted the support of other therapists to do this too. And um, so don't give up your spot when it comes to um, holding a place in a newspaper um, for something like that, because that is a ton of free advertising for you. And um, it doesn't cost you anything to be a local contributor. Even if you just do it one time, it's still worth it. So um, definitely think about that. You can recycle these, these kinds of articles and put them on your own blog. Again, you're kind of like Max Maximizing your reach by making sure that your website is going to be looking super up-to-date and fresh. Um, the other thing, I made myself some notes on my computer so I could um, read this as I go along, is um, networking with local associations. So when I moved my practice from city to city, I moved my practice uh, about five years ago to a city that was probably 30, 35 minutes away from my former location. I was really worried, even though I was an established clinician, that I was gonna lose a lot of my, um, case, my caseload. So I started to think about how I was gonna dust off my referral sources again. And what I ended up doing was, um, I joined a local association that's a nonprofit organization that's called the Family Center. Now, in your community, you might have something similar. You might have something more specific to your niche. For example, we had a Gilda's Club, um, which was a cancer support community. I offered to run a talk there on coping with you know, um, depression during an oncology diagnosis or something that was really in my niche. I also offered um, you know, like a self-care workshop for the caregiver and things like that that were just free topics that I just offered a speaking gig for. And um, I got a lot of people to come to that. You can also have someone take a picture of it and then instantly you write an article about that and that goes into your blog or you share it with a local newspaper. Don't forget the newspapers are hungry for content. They have almost nothing to print on a weekly basis and they're eager to get something that's of interest interest like this. When you're an expert sharing tips, that's something they want to have in their paper too. And they put it online as well. And then you can share the online link version of it, not just the hard copy. Um, when I moved my practice though, I was really worried about losing my caseload. I will tell you, every single client followed me, which is a real testament to doing great work, doing great therapy. I felt really good about that. Um, I couldn't believe people were willing to make that commute, um, sometimes in rush hour and snowy days here in Michigan or bad traffic, um, and they did it. So I didn't have to work that hard to reestablish myself over here, but I did join a community called the Family Center. And um, there's a lot of benefit to that, and you might have something like this in your own community, but I'll tell you really quickly, they offer four times a year, they offer what they call a meet and greet. Now you could get the same benefit out of joining your local chamber of commerce, or if you joined um, Rotary or the Optimist Club, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but even if you were a one year member and you went to meetings, you're meeting a ton of local professionals. And sometimes your referrals will come to you in a very obvious way, and sometimes they come to you just by people knowing who you are and knowing your name and knowing what you're offering. Um, so the more that you're out there, the more you establish yourself online and you have a really healthy online presence and you have a really healthy community presence, people start to really recognize you as a local expert. The Family Summer Center ran these um, meet and greet programs four times a year and you would come and bring your business cards and they would go around the whole room. It would be like a coffee and donuts kind of thing. 
and they would go around the whole room and you get like two minutes to basically tell the whole room who you are and what your expertise was. And there were a lot of times when I was listening to who else was in the room and I would think to myself, oh, you're a divorce attorney, um, you work with family law, or oh, you're a new physician in town and you work with women's health issues. It would pique my ear and I would be sure to go up to them afterwards and just stick my hand out and um, introduce myself. Now, don't forget, I'm an introvert. I know I seem like an extrovert because I'm really, you know, engaged and energized, but I need to recharge alone. And I am not the best person when it comes to trying to network. That makes me a little nervous when I have to do that in a room full of strangers, but that's the way to do it. And if I can do it, you can do it too. And don't forget what Brene Brown says. You can be brave and afraid at the same time, right? So get out there, stick your hand out, shake their hand. They're looking to make a connection. That's why they're there too. So you're definitely going to want to do that and give them a little stack of business cards and grab some of their cards like we talked about in the marketing video um, last week. Don't forget the power of sharing that you're doing a mutual referral, right? So you're interested in also potentially referring to them then they will say, oh, yeah, tell me again what you do. And so then it turns into something a little deeper because they know that there's something in it for them too. Um, so be sure to do that. Yeah, join your chamber of commerce. Look for these nonprofit organizations that maybe are specific to your niche audience. Um, and then a couple other tips, and I know I'm talking a million miles a minute. Is everybody keeping up? Give me a little thumbs up if I'm um, if you're on track with me, so I know. And let me know also if you have any questions, you can post them into um, the comment section and I'll get to those. But I want to pack in a lot of information and I only have a few minutes here. Um, but I also really encourage you to um, create a little signature talk for yourself. Um, it can just be half an hour, 45 minutes. It doesn't have to be really long. You can leave room for Q&A at the end of your um, presentation. But I would offer a talk and offer it everywhere for free at first. When I started out speaking, I now um, make a really healthy amount of money when I go speak across the country or at conferences, um, it's in the several thousands. Um, I try to have a minimum um, speaking fee of 2,500. Some of them are up to 5,000 now, so I'm feeling really good about that. But I started with free talks, um, and I did them everywhere. I did them at libraries. I did them at churches. Um, I did them at hospitals. I did them for conferences. I did them for support groups. Um, I was just trying to get myself out there as much as possible. And every time you do that, people are building trust in you. They're getting to know you as a therapist, but also as a potential referral source. Um, so try to create if you can, when you really get going, a little something that you can offer to um, organizations that are looking for a speaker. And they are everywhere. Everyone's looking for a speaker. The church groups, the moms groups, um, the local organizations, the hospitals, um, the libraries. There are tons and tons of organizations that are looking for speakers. And you could be that uh, person for them. And when you offer a free talk, um, make sure to have somebody try to film a couple clips. And then again, you can throw that up on your website. And now you're a speaker, right? So you want to be able to continue to build that as you go. Because if you want to build a really thriving private practice, it isn't just going to be based on one client at a time. I see about 35 people a week, which is a huge caseload, but I like it. I love the rhythm of it. And when I have a no show like I did right now, I'm not filling it because it's before Christmas and I want to give myself a break. Um, but I think it's also um, a great idea to be able to get yourself out there and be known um, in this way. And being a speaker definitely affords you that chance to um, build yourself up as a local authority and um, become the expert that you want to be seen as. So um, using your network, right? So I was talking about having five to 10 people in your own personal network that you probably aren't even thinking of, but that would be probably already a good source for referrals. And don't forget, when you post things on your personal pages, like your LinkedIn page, on your Instagram, your Facebook, on your website, on your Twitter, whatever kind of social media channels that you have, um, you're going to definitely want to um, be able to share um, 
you know, information that's going to show that you are open to new referrals, that you are an expert in this area. And um, I think that's going to really help your practice grow because you never know who's already talking to somebody that they work with or someone's cousin or somebody's neighbor or whatever it is, and they are interested in um, starting therapy. It would not be a conflict of interest to work with someone um, in your network who's related to them or who works with them. Now, speaking of conflict of interest, really quickly. I have a personal Facebook page, but I never allow my clients to friend me on that. So we can talk more about social media guidelines and ethical uh, challenges and things like that later. But when you create a business page, um, I have a couple different business pages on Facebook now, and I let anybody follow me there because I'm not sharing pictures of my kids and my dog and you know my personal life or my vacations. I'm only sharing business-related information. So um, there's no conflict there, and I'm not, uh, I'm not friending them back. Um, you don't want to be friends personally with your clients on Facebook or any other social media channel, and we'll talk about that in a future Facebook Live. So we talked about blogging, we talked about speaking, we talked about using your network, we talked about writing articles for the local paper, we talked about, um, what else, oh, networking with your local organizations, um, offering your services in a really great way so that your, um, your practice will grow by word of mouth. Um, you know, we're going to also, we talked about Google alerts. Um, that's also a really important way to kind of be sure that you're fresh up on the latest topics in your industry so that you're establishing yourself online as an authority. It's especially important on LinkedIn. Um, how many of you have LinkedIn profiles? I'm really curious. If you're online right now, give me a little thumbs up if you have a LinkedIn profile. I just want a little straw poll on that because LinkedIn is a great way to connect with other professionals and it's a wonderful way to establish yourself as an expert on that platform. Um, some people do podcast interviews. I, I do a couple of those. I'm not super savvy at that. Uh, but I do think doing uh, podcast interviews, oh, I thank you for all the likes. I hope that the angry and the sad faces are just mistakes. <laughs> if you're angry or sad, let me know. Um, I can help you. I'm a trained professional. <laughs> but I know when I hit those um, love and heart buttons, sometimes I hit the wrong one and I'm like, now I'm mad. Um, but if you're mad about something and I'm saying, I want to know about it. Or if you're sad, um, let me know. And... Um, Building, oh, Janet had a question. She couldn't join us today, but she asked me to address this. Now, this is something that I think a couple of you could relate to. Janet is living and practicing in New Mexico, and she said, I am building a practice in an economically underserved state um, with a population that is not affluent. And so she said, how can I build a thriving private practice and um, not take insurance? So, Janet, I'm really curious why you don't want to take insurance, because if you just decided to only take Blue Cross Blue Shield, for example, one of the highest reimbursement rate insurance plans out there, um, at least in Michigan, it is, in my state. I don't know if it's true for all of you. I'm speaking to you across the whole country, so I don't know what um, is the highest payer in your, in your state. But Blue Cross Blue Shield is a great payer. They pay very quickly, and they pay very high. So even if you're only credentialed for one insurance company, I would just pick that one because that way your clients could um, pay you a very small copay. Sometimes there's no copay depending on their insurance plan. Um, sometimes it's only $20 or so, but that usually is more doable for people to come on a regular basis for therapy. And then you get your full reimbursement rate from the insurance company. So let's think that through because I think that offering um, at least one insurance network work panel is um, is something that I would encourage all of you to consider doing. I know some people want to build only a cash fee um, uh, practice. Cash fee practices can be really hard to sustain over the long haul because it's hard for people to come every week uh, for years on end with just a cash fee. Um, so Let's be sure to um, stay open to the possibility of insurance. And I can help you if you want to know more about how to do billing. Um, I use an online clearinghouse called Office Ally. It's super, super easy. It's a template that is just lives online on a website. And I just literally click, 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 go in there. And each time I have a client, I put in the diagnosis code and the data service and I hit update and it sends. So it's very, very simple to do online billing. I used to pay a biller to do my billing and that was ridiculous because I think I paid her like $500 a month and I ended up doing this online clearinghouse and I think it only cost me like 
$20 a month now to have, a, um, to have them do my billing online that way through that uh, website. And I can talk to you in another Facebook Live about billing and the little um, you know, tips on that and uh, diagnosis codes and CPT codes and all the things you need to know about that. But I would encourage you to do that. And then Janet, to answer that question again about building in the economically underprivileged um, states, you could consider doing group therapy, where each person in the group um, spends less per person, but you're getting more because there's maybe 10 people in your group. So if each person's only paying, you know, $30, $40, but you have 10 people in your group, um, you know, for a couple hour session, that's $400. So it might be worth thinking about doing um, some group sessions. I like to run groups in addition to my individual sessions. That's a really um, great way to build your thriving practice. Um, and, and what I was going to say earlier that I think I, I got a little sidetracked is when you're building a thriving private practice, you're really going to want to not only do those individual one by one by one sessions. For me, I am almost at a $300,000 um, annual salary now. And it is a combination of not only my private practice, but it is also my retreats, my workshops, my speaking gigs, my articles. Now sometimes I'm getting paid to write articles. So all of that is expanding. And all of it is part of building a really healthy, thriving practice. So I share that with you because I want to um, inspire you to do the same. And I want to encourage you to diversify what you're offering so that it's not only case by case by case. That's a really hard way um, to build an entire career. Um, and I find it personally more satisfying to um, be a public speaker and to do some retreat work and to do some workshops and uh, one day programming and and um, some other things like that. It just keeps me on my toes and it offers me a day out of my office doing something different. Sometimes I'm being paid to travel to speak at conferences and things, which I think are, is really a fun way to share your knowledge and expertise. Um, so yeah, so groups are important. Telehealth would be another option. I'm not personally super familiar with telehealth options. Um, I like digital online therapy kind of things. I do want to learn more about that because I think it's becoming more and more popular. And I think it offers a way to practice um, with clients who live in other states or in other more affluent areas like Janet was mentioning. Um, I think she said she's licensed in Texas as well. So she currently resides in New Mexico, but telehealth would offer you an option then to maybe work with a more affluent um, population group. So let's explore that in a future um, topic area. So I've been rattling, rattling, rattling for 26 minutes here, but I'm wondering if anybody has any quick questions. Um, I went through a thousand ideas already on how to build your caseload. Hopefully you got some uh, one or two ideas that will help you kind of jumpstart into 2020. I can't wait to see all the things that uh, this group is gonna be building as the new year approaches. So any questions? Um, oh, there are some questions here. Okay, can you please talk about getting clients for online therapy practice too? Okay, so Linda, I was just saying, I'm going to thank you for that. Um, I'm going to definitely look into telehealth options and um, digital um, online work. There are some platforms I understand that are HIPAA compliant and some that are not. Um, I do have clients who are cash fee clients that I don't use insurance for that sometimes will move out of state and then will want to continue working with me. And I can't take their insurance because it's out of state insurance now. So they just continue working with me on a cash fee basis. And sometimes they use FaceTime or Skype. Um, and it's, it's okay because it's not being billed through insurance. So if they're, if they're okay with that, I'm okay with that too. Um, Mr. Jones is here establishing yourself as an expert. Reach out to the people you know everywhere you can. Yes, for sure. And tip using Google Alerts. I love that. Yes. And I was talking about that as well today. So thank you for that. Um, networking. Oh, yes. Thank you. You're highlighting all my things. Thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Um, love what you said about being mutual referral sources need to be helpful to others. Yes, Allie, this is so important. We talked about it in the marketing, um, in the marketing uh, Facebook Live that we did last week. When you want to connect with other people and you're asking them to refer to you, their first question is always going to be, what's in it for me? I mean, that's what every small business owner and entrepreneur is thinking, kind of like, what is, what's the benefit to me? And when I meet a new referral source, I'm always trying to think first, how can I answer their call? Like if I meet with a physician or I meet with 
another therapist in my town who maybe doesn't have the same expertise that I do. Uh, maybe they see more uh, men's issues or they do couples therapy work, which I don't do a lot of. I always want to grab their card because I'm saying I need to be able to refer to you. And then, hey, by the way, here's my perfect referral. So scratching someone else's back is a wonderful way to um, increase your network. And yes, blogging for others. Um, I've been a guest blogger for a couple people's sites, and that is a wonderful way to expand your online reach. Because think about it, if someone else has an audience of 8,000 people and you're just starting out, you know, that's a great way to get yourself, you know, more um, on Google and making sure that you have a bigger online presence, but also reaching a really large audience. So think about people in your network who already have an existing podcast or a blog or a vlog or, you know, any online YouTube channel or whatever it might be. Maybe you could pitch them and say, hey, I have a great idea for you. I've got a great topic that I would love to come in and answer a few questions about. And when you pitch that, don't forget, they're constantly looking for content experts. So when you can just spoon feed it to them and give them the questions even that you would be answering, they're going to be like, that's an easy yes. Um, so yes, I love this. Thank you so much. Um, yes, your business page is separate from your private page. Keep your private page private. That's correct. Um, how did you figure out your niche and what did you do to gain more knowledge in it? Online CEU trainings, live trainings. Oh, okay. Tamara, great question. My niche was working with women um, who were much like myself. They were uh, busy moms, working moms who were um, sometimes anxious, sometimes feeling overwhelmed, sometimes thwarted by life transitions, sometimes experiencing situational experiential depression. Um, I did a little bit of mood disorder work, like bipolar and that kind of thing. I used to work for years and years inpatient. I did inpatient psych. I did um, integrative medicine. I worked for big university hospitals like University of Michigan Hospital and Evanston Hospital in Illinois. So I had a huge background in clinical like inpatient work, but I knew I always wanted to land here in this little office um, practicing as a private practice therapist. And I knew I could do it. I just didn't know how to start it. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to work with people who I could really resonate with. And so when I started building, I, um, I did a lot of extra training. I did CEUs like crazy. You have to get 45 a year, um, I think, to renew your MSW in the state of Michigan. Is that a national thing that we all have to get 45 every three years? I don't know. I got to know that. Um, but I would do CEUs. Um, I picked different topics that I would go to conferences on. Um, and I would do online trainings. I'm a big super fan of Brene Brown's work. So I did a lot of her online trainings. You know, for um, MSWs, she offers a, I think it was like 20 some credits or something to do this online course. And it's all Brene Brown's teachings. And you get credits towards your CEUs. And you can do so many online ones a year. Some of them you have to do in person. And of course, meet the um, requirements for pain and ethics and all those things. Sex, uh, sex trafficking, I think, is a new, um, new one that we have to um, be credentialed for. But yes, I did that, and I gained a lot of knowledge that way in expanding my um, my expertise in in working with women. But I also did a lot of work myself, and I would recommend this to everyone that you also go to therapy if you haven't done it yourself do it because you're going to really understand a lot about what you love about being in therapy, what you don't like about being in therapy, what parts are hard, where you have resistance, um, what you like or don't like about your accessibility to your therapist or how they run their session. Um, and what you learn by being, you know, on the couch yourself is super, super valid. So when I did that, I went through a lot of therapy myself I really started to understand, you know, what I liked and what I didn't like and what kind of therapist I wanted to be uh, based on my own experience with therapy. So if you haven't been in therapy yourself, please um, do yourself a favor because, hey, we all could use it. It's extra support and encouragement and, um, you know, coping skills are always great to add to the toolbox. So <clears throat> definitely do that. 
is it worth doing an online billing company for just one insurance? Um, yes, because you don't, the alternative would be just to um, do like paper billing or you would have to bill directly through their um, website, I think their portal. But I personally love Office Ally. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that in the comments here. Um, everyone should look that up. It's an online billing uh, clearing house. And they were so helpful to me. Um, I called the guy when I first started using it and he literally walked me through how to fill a template for every single patient and you do it the same for every person and you put in a template for your information, your MPI number, your tax ID number, you know, your office address and all of those pieces. And that was so helpful because then now I have this online you know, database of all my current existing caseload and you can always delete people if you terminate them or leave them in the archives, you know, setting and you just pull up their information and it's click, click, click. It's so easy. There are lots of different online um, services now, but my personal favorite is Office Ally. Um, what else here? Thank you so much. And I don't know how to pronounce your first name, Mr. Jones. Um, You've been so supportive on, on my Facebook page. I love seeing all your comments, and I love that you are um, um, keeping everybody um, up to date with the tips from this live. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, yeah, get there for yourself. That's right, for sure. Everybody should do that. Any other questions? I'm trying to scroll back through and see if I miss any. <clears throat> um, I think I got all of them for right now. So that is a boatload of information for, um, for today's Facebook Live. And I am so excited to continue to watch your practice thrive and grow. Um, sometime in the new year, I am gonna be offering um, some type of online coaching um, opportunity. So if people are interested in that and doing something a little bit more of a, you know, accelerated deep dive with maybe a small group, I will be offering that um, sometime in the new year. I'm going to spend a little bit of time getting super clear on exactly how I'm going to format that, but that will be um, an opportunity for you if you're interested. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue sharing tons and tons of tips on this page, and I cannot wait to help you thrive. So I wish you all the best this week. Get out there, build your caseload, tell me what's working, tell me what's not working, and we're going to tweak it together and continue to make make it happen for you. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great afternoon or morning. It's still morning here. <laughs> Feels like the day is going by fast. <laughs> Bye.